Welcome to Heaven Awaits. If this is your first time checking this channel out, I'm glad to have you here. My name is Lee, and I narrate the near-death experiences of those who have died and have seen the other side. These videos are meant to bring hope to a sometimes hopeless world and show people that there is life after death. If you enjoy these videos, please consider hitting the thumbs up, subscribe, and bell icons to be notified of new content. Doing so is free, and it does help the channel grow. To my returning viewers, I'm glad to have you back. Today's experience was posted to the Indurf website. After a horrific motorcycle accident, today's experiencer finds himself talking to God, who tells him that it isn't his time and that he still has work for him to do. Get comfortable, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and let's dive into today's experience. I resided in a tight-knit rural community where familiarity among neighbors was the norm. The year was 1978, and I was a 15-year-old living in a backdrop of rolling countryside. Just a few days prior, a gentle rain had graced the area, leaving behind its soothing touch. This incident I am about to recount occurred during the summer, a season ripe for adventure. My youthful enthusiasm led me to the local motocross track, a place where I felt most alive. This day, however, I carried an uncommon determination, a fervor to conquer a challenge I'd faced countless times before. The object of my attention was a set of double jumps, a pair of mounds carefully sculpted for thrill-seekers like me. But today was different. An urge, a mysterious whisper within, prompted me to push the boundaries of speed and height, to fly higher and farther than ever. As I approached the jumps, my motorcycle's engine roared in harmony with my racing heart. The voice, that ever-present companion, a friend amidst life's chaos, cautioned me to slow down. Yet in a rare display of defiance, I brushed aside its counsel, choosing instead to throttle the engine even more, as if seeking to outpace my own fears. This voice, a constant in my tumultuous upbringing defined by violence and pain, had been my solace, a source of guidance in moments of turmoil. It often whispered reassurance during my most vulnerable hours, a companion during periods of distress and uncertainty. Strangely, I had always assumed this internal confidant was a universal presence, a part of every person's narrative. Now, back to the events of that fateful day. Ignoring the voice's plea, I charged towards the jumps, a sense of exhilaration melding with a burgeoning dread. A split second before takeoff, a subtle detail emerged a rut atop the second jump. It was a moment of revelation that turned into a catalyst for catastrophe. My control vanished, and my motorcycle twisted and turned in mid-air, hurtling me toward the ground. My attempt to surpass past records ended in a jarring collision with the unforgiving earth. I lost consciousness, my body a puppet of gravity's relentless pull. There were witnesses, two souls who had witnessed the drama unfold. Riding behind me at a more cautious pace, they observed the event with breaths held, their eyes catching the dusty aftermath of the impact. Suspended momentarily above the earth, then disappearing into the haze, my body left an indelible image in their minds. Fear paralyzed them, the inertia of shock compelling them to keep a distance, hovering around fifty yards from my fallen form. Minutes seemed like hours as they watched, vigilant for any sign of life. Eventually, they summoned the courage to approach, narrowing the gap to fifteen feet. Their disbelief clashed with the sight before them, a stillness that seemed to defy life's pulse. They deliberated, their trepidation palpable. Then, like a flicker of hope, I inhaled deeply and my eyes fluttered open. Witnessing my resurrection, their relief mingled with awe. My life had hung in the balance, a precarious thread between realms. The absence of a helmet, a simple decision to enjoy a casual ride, had been a harbinger of my vulnerability. As the ground rushed up to meet me, a void enveloped me briefly, accompanied by the rhythmic thump of my own heartbeat. The world faded to black, yet my senses remained attuned to the rhythm within. With sudden clarity, I awakened, my eyes struggling to adjust to the light. To my astonishment, I was both the observer and the observed. My gaze oscillated between my upright self and my prone form on the ground. At that pivotal juncture, the familiar voice that had guided me through life spoke again. Urgent and resolute, it commanded, Hurry, we must go. Compelled by this ethereal beckoning, I turned to face the source. 
For the first time, the voice materialized, taking on the form of an ethereal being, an angelic figure radiating strength and authority. Her stature mirrored that of a young child, yet her aura exuded an aura of profound significance. Her words, infused with urgency, directed my attention westward to an ominous trio advancing rapidly, a triad of malevolent entities, sinister embodiments of pain, despair, and malevolence. Their very essence reeked of malevolence as they sought to ensnare my spirit. It was a confrontation with evil itself, an encounter that resonated with echoes of ancient narratives. In the company of this celestial guardian, I ascended, leaving behind the confines of Earth. Our connection was solidified as we clasped wrists, and like a comet, we soared into the skies. Below, the world dwindled into a distant orb, and space unveiled its cosmic majesty, stretching infinitely in every direction. Streaking past stars and planets, we traversed the heavens in a blur of luminescence, like travelers on an ethereal highway. Our journey culminated in an ethereal haven, a realm suffused with a golden luminescence, a sanctuary free from pain, hunger, and sorrow. Love permeated every atom, transcending human comprehension. In this place, I felt an abiding peace, a harmony that resonated in every corner. At the edge of this celestial haven, the angelic guide led me to an understanding. I was part of a divine design, a thread woven into the tapestry of creation. This truth struck me with the force of revelation, affirming that our actions reverberate beyond ourselves, touching the lives of countless others. It was a moment of profound insight, revealing how interconnectedness shapes the world around us. Yet, the realm of eternity could not be my home, for I had a role to play back on Earth, a role integral to the unfolding symphony of existence. The celestial emissary communicated the essence of my purpose, urging me to return and fulfill my part in the cosmic narrative. Despite the reluctance to leave the sanctuary, I recognized the necessity of this return, driven by the awareness that my actions held consequences beyond my understanding. As I prepared to return, God himself manifested, an awe-inspiring figure seated in a higher realm, draped in robes of otherworldly hue. His very presence radiated a serene authority, a presence that transcended mortal boundaries. He extended a hand, invoking a parental gesture that transcended time and space. Engulfed by his palpable love, I realized that he held an intimate awareness of my life's deeds, the pain and joy, the moments of darkness and light. It was as if my entire existence was laid bare before him, an open book upon which he gazed with profound understanding. Amidst this cosmic reckoning, he pronounced my worthiness, affirming my goodness in a profound whisper. As our hands met, he imparted a sense of purpose, a revelation of my role in his grand tapestry. A vision unfolded, a glimpse of an older version of myself, accompanied by a son who would care for me. A sense of responsibility blossomed, grounded in the understanding that my actions would influence generations to come. In this realm of clarity, my queries found answers. I inquired about my son's mother, only to learn that her path diverged. This foresight would bear fruit in years to come, as life unfolded according to the vision. An exchange ensued a dialogue that transcended words. He disclosed that the interconnectedness of our actions shapes the fabric of reality. His words revealed the intricate balance of existence, a symphony in which each note played a vital role. Amidst this cosmic conversation, I beseeched him to mend my neck, not for my sake, but for my son's. The request bore the weight of a father's love, a plea grounded in selflessness. In response, he imbued my neck with his healing touch, orchestrating a symphony of realignment, a restoration that echoed his boundless compassion. With a final revelation, I returned to the realm of the living, my senses rekindling, life's vibrancy flooding back. The two witnesses of my journey stared in astonishment, their skepticism shaken by the inexplicable resurrection they had witnessed. I shared this extraordinary tale with but a handful, knowing the skepticism it could evoke. Yet, its impact persisted, kindling a unique ability within me, a wellspring of guidance and empathy that surfaces when others are in need. I became an instrument of solace, providing words of comfort and wisdom when life's challenges weighed heavy. While I never became a preacher or a public figure, this extraordinary experience endowed me with the power to touch lives in a profound, intimate way. 
that does it for today's experience. As always, let me know what you thought in the comments section below. Until next time, stay safe and be blessed.